Good evening and welcome to St. Bartholomew's evening prayer. Let us begin with a colic to center our hearts and our minds on Christ. Bless, O Lord, we thy servants who minister in thy temple. Grant that what we say with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts we may show forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Evening prayer begins on page 115 of your prayer books. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. The confession of sin may be found on page 116 of your prayer books. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light may be found on page 118 of your prayer books. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the world. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 106, Part 2, beginning on page 743 of the Book of Common Prayer. It can also be found in the PDF file. We will read it in unison. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshipped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. They refused the pleasant land and would not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and would not listen to the voice of the Lord. So he lifted his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness to cast out their seed among the nations and to scatter them throughout the lands. They joined themselves to Baal Peror and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They provoked him to anger with their actions and a plague broke out among them. Then Fihinus stood up and interceded and the plague came to an end. This was reckoned to him as righteousness throughout all generations forever. Again they provoked his anger at the waters of Meribah, so that he punished Moses because of them. For they so embittered his spirit that he spoke rash words with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them. They intermingled with the heathen and learned their pagan ways, so that they worshipped their idols and became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to evil spirits. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, which they offered to the idols of Canaan, and to the land, and the land was defiled with blood. Thus they were polluted by their actions, 
and went whoring in their evil deeds. Therefore the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people, and he abhorred in their inheritance. He gave them over to the hand of the heathen, and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them, and they were humbled under their hand. Many a time did he deliver them, but they rebelled through their own devices and were brought down in their iniquity. Nevertheless, he saw their distress when he heard their lamentation. He remembered his covenant with them and relented in accordance with his great mercy. He caused them to be pitied by those who held them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember that I told you these things when I was still with you? And you know what is now restraining him, so that he may be revealed when his time comes. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Not but only until the one who restrains it is removed. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will destroy with the breath of his mouth, annihilating him by the manifestation of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is apparent in the working of Satan, who uses all power, signs, lying, wonders, and every kind of wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion, leading them to believe what is false, so that all who have not believed the truth but took pleasure in unrighteousness will be condemned. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and the God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, Comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together the song of Mary, the Magnificat, found on page 119 of your prayer book. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. 
the promise he made to our forefathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years old, who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds around you and pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw this, she could not remain hidden. She came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not fear. Only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him, except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her. But he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and called out, Child, get up! Her spirit returned, and she got up at once. Then he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded and he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our liturgy continues with the Song of Simeon found on page 120 of your prayer book. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed can be found on page 120 of your prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages A may be found on page 121 of the prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either aloud or in the holy silence of your hearts. Please join me for the prayer for general thanksgiving found on page 125 of your prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages, Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.